I think if you dream it, you'll do it. Never met anyone like you. I hope not. Olivia, congratulations on the movie. Thank you so much. And so, before you started this project, what did Elvis mean to you? Because you were born, what, almost two decades? Two decades I after was, you died? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I grew up listening to Elvis. My parents were huge music lovers and, you know, he, he sort of is, you know, in the wallpaper of society in a way. You know, his contribution to music runs so, so deep. Um, yeah, I, I knew him as a musician. I didn't know anything about his life. I didn't know you know, where he was, what he was inspired by or where he came from. So since, you know, stepping into that world and, and, and learning about all of that, it's been, yeah, really, really fascinating. I think that's so interesting, like the uh, the wallpaper, part mm. of the wallpaper of mm. culture, right? Which you yeah. kind of, you, you fall, you kind of don't think about it yeah. sometimes. It's just always well, there. This was the thing. I remember when I, after I got the role, I suddenly started seeing him everywhere on t-shirts, graffiti on buildings, pictures up on, in, in, in restaurants, like his name was everywhere. I was seeing Presley everywhere. You know, I, he's totally, he's there all the time that you're almost blinded by it. And what about Priscilla? Did, did she mean anything to you before? I didn't know much about role? her, no. I mean, I knew that she, that him, uh, that him, that her and Elvis were married for some time, but I didn't know much about her or where she was from. Okay, so then what happens next? Like, tell me, th the process of getting this role and then what you did next in terms of research? I mean, it came down to really getting to know her, I guess, um, in a weird meta metaphysical sense, because obviously I, I didn't I didn't get to meet her while we were shooting the project. It was, you know, a lot of reading. It was um, a lot of listening. I think her voice was very important to me and also just important to sort of my interpretation of her, her softness, the way that she carried herself. I. I worked a lot with Polly Bennett, um, our movement coach and choreographer, to sort of um, help manifest her physicality um, and, and femininity in a way that felt natural and grounded. And yeah, I used to listen to her interviews going to sleep. It was just, yeah, getting really familiar with her and um, also really learning about the time, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the cultural aspect of it was also really integral to the storytelling. So yeah, a lot of research. Like her character's a really interesting one, I think, mm. to this story because, you know, she's come in and has to learn how to navigate Elvis's crazy mm -hmm, world mm -hmm. and then is there with him as that world starts to crumble. So I mm. think as you were looking at those two aspects of the, mm. her story, mm. like what were you focusing on from a performance perspective? For me, it was, I remember even when I got the audition, I, I knew that it was a biopic. I knew that it was, you know, these big, these famous, famous people. But for me, I think it was important to play them as if they were, you know, the only two people in the world. And I think that's what they were in a way. You know, no one had sort of skyrocketed to that level of fame and that level of superstardom ever. He was the first one to do that, the first in his field. No one had done that before him. And I think it was a very, very isolating world. And I think, you know, it would have been easy to sort of play a stereotype of these of these people and of, of, of Priscilla. But I think at the end of the day, you know, it was just a boy and a girl in love. And that's um, really at, at the heart of it, how I wanted to how I wanted to play it, especially, you know, once you, you know, you've done the voice, the mannerisms or, you know, the hair and the makeup aspect of it was so taken care of by the incredible team that being able to throw that out the window and just to play, like I said, you know, a girl and boy in love was, yeah, really important. And then the fashion as well. The wardrobe's amazing. Yes, the Prada, it was Mew insane. Mew. Uh, what was that like? Was that fun? And it did, did it give you a new appreciation of that sort of 60s and 70s yes. silhouettes? Yes. I mean, it, it also gave me a new appreciation just for fashion in general. You know, when you work with somebody as acclaimed as, as, as CM, as Catherine Martin, and obviously, you know, our collaboration with, with Prada too, you, you come, I came away from that film with a whole new appreciation for, for fit, for cut, for tailoring, for the artistry behind fabrics, around shape and silhouettes. Um, absolutely, you know, to step into, these, um, into this world in these costumes, it was just, you know, what, what an experience as a young actor, you know. And it's the story is tragic too, right? So mm -hmm. you've got this, this, this great love between Elvis and Priscilla, mm -hmm. but then there's this other love, like the mm -hmm. love of the world for Elvis, yeah. which ends up dominating everything and comes between them. Like it's, like I look at like Baz's Romeo and Juliet, is this Shakespearean tragedy. Mm. This is kind of a Shakespearean for tragedy sure. as well. Right? Yeah, I've been saying that quite a lot actually is, you know, I mean, I think Baz tells incredible love stories. And I think this film at, at, at the heart of it is an incredible love story. And it's not necessarily romantic love. It's, it's a love between, you know, a man and music, a man and his manager, a man and his mother, a man and his wife, you know, a man and himself. I think one of the biggest themes um, of this film is how, you know, 
how somebody can search their their whole life um, to to be loved rather than searching to give love and how that is the root of of, of suffering, mm. you know, which might be a very sort of big theme, but I think at the crux of it, that's what this film is about. And who are you, Oz? Austin Butler as Elvis. Like, he did all right, didn't he? He did. He did an okay job. <laughs> he did an okay job. No, he was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, to watch his sort of transformation was, yeah, I mean, what a masterclass. He's such a committed actor. Um, I think getting in the ring with him and being able to sort of flesh out these these uh, these characters or these these interpretations of people with, with somebody who carried so much love and respect for his legacy, um, it was, yeah, uh, such a marvellous experience. Was it harder to build the chemistry with the, the COVID protocols that were happening around the time? Of the um, I mean, I think as as actors it's, it's easier um, because we didn't have to wear masks and obviously we had rehearsals and I think, you know, we had to do scenes where we went next to each other and close to each other and so the sort of COVID aspect for us was, you know, in between takes you to put your mask back on and, and, and whatnot. But no, we had we had a fine time um, sort of getting to know each other and, and working on the script and rehearsing with Baz and, mm. and all of that. Well, yeah. I just spoke to Baz. He's very excited uh, about about your performance in this film. What, what, is, what does he like to work with? I adore Baz. We had the best time making this movie all together. Honestly, he, um, he works. I'd never worked with anybody, but he so sort of um, constantly inspired and also looking for inspiration at the same time. I think it's... It's rare that you find a director who is so open and isn't, he's not, in my experience, like stuck in his ways. Like he was very open to different interpretations and I'm definitely an actor who I think, or a person who likes to come with ideas. And he was very, very receptive of that and um, very, very collaborative. And, and I really loved, I loved working with him. Mm. Yeah. And there was, a, there was a lesser known cast member that we have to talk about, Tom. Uh, Tom. Uh, Hanks, that's Hanks. it, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe one day he'll what make was, it. What was, what was he like to work um, alongside? He was great. I mean, Tom, it's funny. Obviously, you know, it's Tom Hanks, but I think, you know, the more that we got to to sort of know each other and um, the more time he spent on the Gold Coast, he really is just a really lovely, normal guy. And, yeah, I mean, it was amazing having him to sort of, you know, captain the ship in a way. He sort of, you know, held everybody to a very high standard. Um, and, you know, I obviously respected him very much for, for his career and, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was mad. It was really crazy, but he's, yeah, he's a legend. Yeah. And we're all loving watching you on TV at the moment in the staircase. Oh, like, thank you. Brilliant performance. The thank show is you. amazing and you are fantastic. Thank you. What was that like? Like Tony Collette, Colin I Firth. I mean, again, like. But it's a true story as well, right? Yes. So it's, it's a crazy, crazy true story. It's a crazy true like? story. I mean, you know, again, Tony, an, an incredible Australian actor, actress I'd looked up to my entire life. Um, yeah, she's, she's amazing. Colin as well. I mean, watching them, what a, such masterclasses. I mean, you know, in one of those earlier scenes, they haven't, there's an argument scene, and I remember watching it and being like, my God, they really just completely sold it. They are, you know, absolutely incredible actors and um yeah I, I really love my time on that and Antonio Campos our director is again one of the one of the sweetest most talented guys I know so to to see the sort of success that he's getting off of that is really exciting yeah, it's gripping it's gripping stuff it's that's great sure. hey I know I'm so excited about it and and as a fellow Perthling I'm obviously contractually obligated to ask you some Please. Western Australian questions absolutely uh, and so tell me about like your your upbringing in Perth uh -huh. what do you think prepared you most for the success that you've had in your career I think in the way that it that it didn't that it didn't prepare me and I mean that as as a compliment too I think it's so far removed from Hollywood and, and all of that that I don't know I just I think I I really respect the craft or I, I really um, I'm acting because I love acting and I'm and I'm removed from I guess the Hollywood aspect of it I think mm. and I think too my I had really great parents and they um, they were like, you have to do great in school and, and finish school or else you're not going to be acting. And so, you know, I had the blessing of growing up in, you know, beautiful Perth with, with beautiful people. And I think, yeah, being removed from that sort of um, Hollywood aspect of it is is a really great thing. Well, I look at it as like the Tame Impala effect, right? Like yeah. you're able to find your own voice totally. before then you, you go to Hollywood and, you know, you get yeah. sucked into that machine. It is a machine. It is a machine for sure. And I think that acting is so much about authenticity and originality, originality, which oftentimes, you know, in the machine of, 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 of you know, the big city can sometimes strip you of that. So. And, and what was the, you talked about not getting a chance to meet Priscilla before the film. But you met her at the Met Gala, maybe other times. What was yeah. that experience like? Really special, you know. I think, I think it was really daunting knowing that I was going to meet her, 
And I'm sure she felt the same. I mean, I cannot think of anything stranger than meeting, you know, some young Australian who just played you in a film. Like, that's so bizarre. And I think, you know, I think we both felt funny about it, but honestly, she was so kind and so um, warm. And uh, yeah, very, very, very lovely and beyond what I thought she was gonna be. So yeah, it was very, very special. And she digs the film, right? She from what totally I digs the film. Yeah, she, yeah, she's written some beautiful things about it. And obviously she came to Calm with us and I was able to um, sit next to her and we got to enjoy the film together. So it was very, very special. And what was that like? A 12 minute standing ovation? Yeah, like it's, yeah, it was pretty nuts. You guys seeing the film in its totality for the first time? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty, it was crazy, you know, but at the same time, this film is, is a film that's meant to be enjoyed with other people. And so to sit in a room with 700 people who all just went through this sort of crazy roller coaster of a journey emotionally and intellectually, and the film itself is so stimulating, you know, and so to, to sit with people and watch it was, it was a joy mm -hmm. and to be able to you know sit here and talk to you about it is equally as exciting and what are we going to see you in next i can't talk about anything right now nothing's been announced but i'm, I'm really excited yeah because I, I just look at the trajectory of your career and 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 doing a baz lerman film is always a very special thing and the staircase is so great like i just see that there is just nothing but upside going oh, forward i mean yeah i'm i'm excited i'm really excited does it I come think. about like does it come down to then like more pressure to choose the right role now um, that you're at a point like this i think it's less about the right i mean i always try to be character driven you know i think it's it is exciting to be in a point where you can be a little bit more selective and and I've definitely been enjoying, I think, I mean, you know, I've been acting for quite a while and um, I just, you know, usually I'm just stoked to be on a job, you know, just stoked to be working. So I think, yeah, it's, a, it's a, an interesting new chapter of being able to be a bit more selective and, and, and curating a bit more. And um, yeah, I'm really excited for what's to come. And finally, what do you hope people take away from Elvis? You know, I, this movie is so much about a man as it is about sort of, I think the world and about how history can repeat itself and also about how music can bring people together. I just think this movie is fantastic and it sounds biased because I'm in it, but it's just one of the best films that I've seen in such a long, long time. I don't think I've seen a movie like this in the cinema in years. And I think it's a film that's supposed to bring people together just like his music brings people together. So I hope that we get to reintroduce his legacy to the people. Olivia, great to chat to you. Great and I hope we you. get to you, get you back in Western Australia soon. Soon, please. I'm, I'm so happy that the borders have opened back up. I'll be over there soon, for sure. We can go on together. We're suspicious. Like